city boy. And if you know me at all, you know that the closest thing we get to camping is a Hilton and a Starbucks within five miles of that Hilton. I have done the church camp thing, I've done the Boy Scout camp thing, and I've had those moments that have really changed my perspective about being out in nature. But camping for me, when we talk about bubbly brooks and campfires, tends to be the fountain in the front yard and the fire pit in the driveway, which is new for us since we've moved to Wisconsin. Most of us put our fire pits in the backyard in other states, but here in Wisconsin, everybody has them out front, so we joined along. It wasn't until I was 13 that we came to visit my grandparents in Seymour, just north of Appleton, and we'd only visited them one other time. I was six the time before that. We didn't get out here very often. My grandparents at that point still owned 120 acres of land out their back door. And when you walked out onto their patio, there were two huge chicken coops. They raised about 4,000 chickens um, twice a year. And then they had a barn on the left, but there was no electric light anywhere on the horizon once you stepped off their back patio. And it was one night where I stepped out and then saw for the first time the moon and the stars just light up the fields. And it, this awe-inspiring kind of moment. I wonder if that was what it was like when the angels, Rob, you are so tall, when the angels heard God call light out of the darkness. Hear this poet's attitude. A voice cuts through the silence, breaks the stillness. With a sound like the whisper of quiet water, yet holding the power of a roaring river, God cries, let there be light, and shatters the darkness. Explosions of brightness then burst through the shadow, as now in the heavens great streaking fly, and fiery masses take their place in the sky. Before the creation of the sun and the moon, God, who John in the New Testament describes as light and in whom there is no darkness at all, steps into the formless and empty darkness and brings light. Let there be light. The psalmist writes, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom should I be afraid? The prophet Isaiah speaks, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Great light. They that have lived in the land of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. Jesus tells us his purpose, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And the Apostle Paul tells Timothy, it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Christ, who destroyed death, life, and immortality to light. And then one more, from 1 Thessalonians you are all children of light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. We know the light of God because we have heard the truth of God. And as the writer of John reminds us, you shall know the truth. Anybody want to wrap it up? And the truth. Holy cow. As their wedding day approached, a young couple grew more and more nervous. Each had a problem they had never shared with anyone, in including the person they were about to marry. So the groom went to his father and he said, Dad, Dad, I need some advice. I am really concerned about the success of my marriage. I love my fiancé very much, but I have the worst smelly feet. I'm afraid my future wife will find them and me disgusting. No problem, said his dad. All you have to do is wash your feet as often as possible, always wear socks, even to bed. And the young man thought, I could do that. The bride had her own troubles. Mom, when I wake up in the morning, my breath is truly awful. Her mother advised, in the morning, get straight out of bed, go to the bathroom, brush your teeth, don't say a word until you've brushed them. Not a word. And the bride thought that she could try that. So the couple was married in a beautiful ceremony and not forgetting the advice each had received. They had this glorious kind of honeymoon marriage for the first six months they were together. But 
Shortly before dawn that day, the husband woke up horrified to discover that one of his socks had come off during the night. And as he started to frantically search for the sock, he woke up his bride. And without thinking, she said, what on earth are you doing? And he looked at her and gasped and he said, oh no, followed my sock. The truth can sometimes be a difficult thing to hear. So too, for you and me, can the light be difficult to walk into. It can be difficult if we believe that the light will only bring more criticism or suffering to our lives. I'm willing to believe each of us can speak to that moment of walking into the light after being consumed by the darkness Because that's really what the darkness does. It consumes us. It carries us away from the light and often from the truth. Too often we have known the easy way out. The simple escape. The path of least resistance even when we have known the choice to be the one leading us farther into the darkness. Rather than out of the darkness towards Who among us has not known that moment of decision? Why does the easy road so often seem to be the one that takes us away from the light and the truth of God in Jesus? And yet you already know the answer. In those moments when we must own up, in the times when God calls us to speak up, when we find ourselves convicted enough to will ourselves to stand up, Those moments just cost too much. Quite honestly, sometimes the cost is more than we believe we can give. And yet here is where God's call on our lives, our claim to the title of disciple, comes to the light. We do not belong to the night or the darkness. We are children of the light, people who walked in the darkness and have seen the great light. We who follow will never walk in darkness, for we have the light of life right out of the scripture. And that truth, brothers and sisters, is what brings us first to our knees to hear the words of God's forgiveness and then carries us to our feet to claim our inheritance first as children of God and then our title as follower, as disciple of Christ. So that we call on the name of God in Jesus, we have no need to hide in the darkness. For the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness what? Well, that's not as good as the first one. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Now you know it. Let's do it again. The light shines in the darkness. Okay, well... And so here we are, followers of Christ. Here we are standing in the light and the darkness, it comes to us, and the darkness gets chased away. And so here we stand in the light of God and Jesus to take our place as children of the light, to be reflections of the light of Christ into the world. If you like that last call and response, it only gets better from here. When families are forced to flee their war-torn homeland, your response is, let there be light. You got it. When leaders fail their people, okay, but I'm not sure we got a lot of energy and we're going to ramp up by the end of this bad boy, okay? When children are neglected, when marriages fall apart, When pink slips are handed out, let there be light. When the diagnosis is cancer, let there be light. When the depression overwhelms us, let there be light. When the floods overwhelm as they are in Colorado right now, let there be light. And when the addiction wins another hit, let there be light. When you are too afraid, let there be light. Now, some of you aren't doing it. I'm not going to call you out because I can see your lips not moving. When your courage fails, let there be light. And when you must say goodbye, let there be light. When your life comes crashing down around you, and who of us has not known that moment, let there be light. When you believe God no longer cares about your life, Let there be light. Yes, let there be light to drive out the darkness. 
Let there be light to lead you back home. Let there be light to heal what is broken and light to lift the depression to joy. Let there be light to bring compassion and light to calm your fears and light to know the support of those around you. Let there be light to remind you again and again and that God in Jesus Christ came into the world to be your light and your salvation. And how does that scripture verse wrap up? Of whom should we be afraid? No one, nothing, never again. Because God said, let there be light. Amen.